Okay guys, I'm on the Ganaraska Trail today. I haven't been on this trail for quite some time. So, it'll probably be just uh, an hour trip or something like that. So I'm just stopping here. I want to show you uh, this rock over that way. And I'm shooting against the sun. I can't help that unless I go around that boulder. But I wanted to show you this boulder here with all the ferns on it. It's pretty common up here in Canada to see this kind of stuff. Probably in most places, wherever there's soil, you're going to get life. And uh, it'll grow just about anywhere. Whether you think it's a harsh spot or not. But, uh, but wherever you see down trees you'll see other you see other um, life popping out of that as well so let's jump down here i'll show you what i mean here's some old stuff but you'll see some of these old conks and that from uh, the mushrooms that are growing out of the tree several types go along here there's more of a flat type of a conch which is C-O-N-K, and you'll see it's a flat, it's almost like a, a velvety bottom to it. But that's a different kind of mushroom again. And then, even on some of these standing trees, where sometimes you may not look, you'll see other types of conks and mushrooms, as in right there. Just, just be aware, look around when you're going for a walk and you'll see all kinds of stuff. If you look close, everything's like a, has its own little microclimate. And you'll see all kinds of things that you would normally just walk past. You can see the colors are changing. And it's actually quite nice to walk through the bush today. Mm. As you can see there, Ganaraska trail and what I'm going to do it actually goes through here you can see the old cut and chainsaw it goes up through there we'll go back up the hill I've only been up that hill to where I'm going today just once before just because there's so many other places to go but, uh, I haven't seen anything on my walk so far today it's very windy I'm doing a little bit of crunching but I would have thought that with the Rain last night, I was hoping it would soften the leaves a little bit from stepping on. For those of you that don't know, this kind of tree with the vertical bark grooves is ironwood. I'm sure it has other names. But if you look up, you'll see. Just it has oblong leaves. Alternate. So the branching is alternate. Doesn't mean the branches are opposite each other. One's up, one's down. Sun's in my eyes again. Okay, I'm going to go that way, show you the white pine. I haven't been down to that pine before, so we'll go down and have a look, okay? These large heart-shaped leaves on this type of hardwood, basswood, very soft wood. You stick a pencil in the bark and it'll go right into it. Wow, that's a nice... These trees never cease to amaze me the size of some of these, that they're actually left alone to grow this large and not get cut down before. Here's a size comparison. Okay. Let's have a look over here. Let's try it this way. That's a big one. 
definitely a big one. I can't get my arms around that. It's a huge, huge tree. Okay. Back to where we back to where we were. This here, you can see how steep that is. Coming up, it's all shallow soils through there, all bedrock. And yeah, there's actually quite a bit of this iron ironwood here. Now, scientific name from that, from my memory, unless it's changed, used to be Australia Virginia. Everything has a scientific name. By scientific name, I mean a Latin name. But these Latin names it allows you to do that. So it's basically a large catalog that helps you find and communicate with other people around the world. Okay. Just to give you an idea of what the terrain is like through here. See? Comes down, bit of a shelf, goes down. It's not all just straight up or just one straight, a steep incline. There's terraces in between, you could say, in a lot of these places. So it's not super hot today. It's in the 20s Celsius. <clears throat> and I usually just wear, I usually just wear, these are work boots, they're steel toed, but if you're on trail, you don't need them. Regular shoes will do. I'm off trail a lot, so I don't want to roll my ankles too badly. It's so easy to do. Trail is heading to the left. Upper mark. To the left of the lower mark. Change of direction on the trail. <clears throat> now we're going through a lot of oak, some pine. I don't do this every day. <clears throat> and if I did, I think my lungs would get in good shape in a short time. I don't exercise my lungs enough with the, with the walking. So the skirts around this hill here, skirts around that way, and then eventually gets to the top. And I want to do some exploring beyond that. Now, right now, I'd say we're walking north, northwest, so a little bit, a uh, little bit off. Oh, look at that. Nice piece of quartz here. Nice piece of quartz. There, chunk over that way. Nice. White rock. Supposed to, uh, Quartz crystal, they're supposed to have what? Magical powers, hold energy, that sort of thing. Good luck. Oh, the good chippy. Where'd he go? Here he is. See if I can find him. He's probably hiding now. He was lost. There he goes. Hey, buddy. There he is. See him? Right in that hole down there. Okay. Eastern chipmunk, the official name of that. Little beast. Okay, let's go this way. Getting flatter here as we near the top. Let's paint around a little bit. I know there's a lot of sun. See if I can shade any of that out. I'll get my hat. that help? There you go, my hat. Good for something. And I'm glad to see it. The only purpose is not to hold my head together, but to actually be useful for something. Okay, up and around. 
it looks like up top here. Nice guys. Okay. Let's continue on here. Oak seedling. This baby oak tree coming up. This is nice here. I like this little gorge. This little valley here. Go have a look. Okay. <sighs> Once again, I'll just pull it over this way into the sun. My apologies, but I'm doing this on the fly, right? It's not like uh, it's planned. See, look at that. I always like the look, looks of old rock outcrops like this. The beauty. You can see the the folds in the rock. How it's all deformed. Once again, once uh, it became semi-molten. Lots of heat, lots of pressure from the rocks above. And down around here. There you go. Using my hand. Bringing around acorns are dropping like crazy. You can probably hear them. That's probably a second use for my hat. Okay, back this way. And you go back up on the trail here, this one. Oh, straight up, looks like. Pretty much. Yeah, some nice crystals here, too. Some more quartz. In there. Huh, okay. Up here without tripping. Through here. <clears throat> it's certainly not the most widely used, most widely used trail around because of the access. Okay, turn it around. Came down through that little valley up through there. And back up this way. And headed. We will now head in this direction. What do we got here? <clears throat> Some younger white pine. Red oak. There's the odd white oak in there too. Huh. Let's go slower with this pan. Otherwise look like a blur. And what am I bringing with me today? Even though I know where I am, Still brought a topographic map, compass, and a GPS. And as a last resort, once again, all else fails. Sun sets to the west. You can sit and wait. There's your first point. And if you see going that way, just draw a line between there and you know it's west. Okay, and from there you can get all your other three points. Once you know west, you know your north, your south, and your east. Okay. Now I like this part from up here. Like I said I've been on the hiss once before, <clears throat> and that was. On this part, maybe, I don't know, three years ago, we used to have a black lab and came with me on this trip. Walked all the way to Sheldon Lake, the south side, south end of Sheldon Lake from here. And it's a long walk, well over two hours each direction. Went there and back. <laughs> well, we love these walks. Okay, look down here, see that, bit of a beaver pond down there, 
What we have is do that. Another bit of a gully here. Um, it's a trail. The trail goes on that way. But you can see the rocks there. So what I might do, I might just go for a stroll over this way off the trail and show you what's over there, okay? But you can see, there used to be an old beaver dam right there as well. Long gone. All empty. Okay, let's go over here. Take a walk through the bush here. See what we can find. Oh, easiest way around. Maybe this way. You always like this little walk. I just refresh your memories. Brack and fern there. Got three leaves, toxic to wildlife or wild stock, you could say, like cows and stuff. All right, the usual winter green with the shiny leaves. Wow, look at that, eh? Let's walk this way. I'm sure that last, what is it? <clears throat> some time ago now where I walked up through the swamp this was about a year ago if that I guess last winter maybe and there's a chain of uh, swamps up that way but I haven't gone through this side of it Let's have a quick look yeah she's a mucky one see how that rock face comes straight out of the here. Now I also noticed something else here. I'm trying to figure what, out what this is. See those tracks? Those are fairly large tracks here. Hmm. Let's see if we can find better tracks here. Something that's more obvious. I mean, it certainly wouldn't surprise me. Uh, that one there, Yui shaped one, looks like deer track. There you get clear, clear uh, tracks here. Listen to that swamp water coming out as I step on here. You don't generally sink in too deep. It's not like you know pure mud or anything like that. So it's fairly safe. Not quicksand or anything. Okay, I don't see anything. Go this way. You can see this was one of their trenches. One of their channels, beaver channels. And this area was full of water. So, you know, the water was way up to here. And that's one of its traveling, traveling uh, pathways. In the water. We'll have a look. It's up here. A nice through here. Ah, yeah, look at that in the distance. Pond. I came down through here in a spring runoff. You can see, if you look close, you can actually see where the leaves have fallen. 
onto the old uh, runoff. In the springtime, snow melt it comes down through here. But this time of year, it's dry unless we get a lot more rain than what we have. Now this here, this tree here, I just wanted to show it to you because it's very handy anyway. This is another ironwood. It's well over a foot in diameter, which is actually quite a bit from, for uh, trees that grow this far north, central Ontario. And another example of an old log. See how punky that is? <clears throat> So all the organisms, worms and everything else have pretty much devoured this and it's all turned punky and... Uh oh, what is that? Never noticed that before. Should I zoom in on it? It's only speculation with something pooped here on this log. Don't know what, but it's probably too much information for you guys anyway. The question of what was this tree before? Not much left of it either way you look at it. Go over here. Striped maple here. Moose wood. It's got green bark on it when it's younger. Wow. Nice dandy oak tree here. The beauty. Big one. Healthy one by the looks of it. Two channels. Insect channels. Don't know for sure, but I could have been a sugar maple borer at, borer at one time when it was, when it was in the larva stage. Between those and cankers on the trees, I'll show you some if I find them. Target cankers, nectria cankers are called. They'll grow on the stem usually. You see them on branches too, but eventually they kill the tree. Nasty things growing in the woods. Another one of those, probably sugar maple borer. There's some damage to this tree. Looks like uh, that one was an ash tree. Okay, I'm going down these lowlands here. Ah, here's some more of that. I keep calling this wrong. So I will add that later on. But what it is, is this plant. You can tie this in the knots. I tried to put this on a episode once before and I think we lost the footage but these branches this here you tie these right in a knot and uh, you can use them for belts and all sorts of things you're used for we'll have to add that in I know there's lots of that stuff down here because I've seen this before yeah that's what I would say this is there again I'd say this is a sugar maple borer there again that killed that one. And things change down here. You get different kinds of, some different kinds of plants, not all, but some. Isn't that quite the mess, huh? Go down this way. I like to pick the easiest route through here. This is tree of stripe, sea of striped maple down through there. And hobble bush by looks of it that 
the reddish and yellowish leaves over here. Let's go take a look. Yeah, right here. All this stuff here is hobble bush. See the large buds? The next year here? Right there. Huh. Some more of this stuff. This is really nice stuff. This shrub here. Hobble bush grows quite tall, as tall as myself. But it also can be a tangled mess to walk through, as you can see. And that's really how it got its name. Because it hobbles, hobbles you, or tries to trip you when they grow in these masses like that. And uh, yeah, you can fall flat on your face if you're not careful. Hazelnut does that as well, because they grow in clumps too. What we got here? This stuff here is called mountain maple. It's got the red. It's got the, see it's different than most maples. It leaf is sort of like, it's got a lot of little points on it, but it's got a lot of lobes on it too. It just grows to a shrub here. No, not the tree size or anything like that. What way should we go today? Any ideas? Where would you like to go? This gets wet through here too, in the springtime. And it's even a larger stream than that last one. This is actually a stream, I would say. Intermittent stream, while the other one was more like a, what you call it, rivulet or something like that. Something small. Tangled mess. Ah, can you guys see it? There's a huge burl in the tree up there. Wood woody growth, huge woody growth. Let's see, can I see this on here? It's just got a, it's not these two, it's right there. A huge burl, a woody mass. People like to cut them down and make wooden bowls out of them and stuff like that, but it's way up there. Maybe when we get a little closer, I can have a better view of that. Um, oh my, we're down to 6% battery power. So, go through here. I might conserve some power, <clears throat> just in case I do see some animals. That there looks like a typical canker on that tree there. Very open. Where is that burrow before we run out of? Oh, like garbage. What is that? First time I've seen anything down here. Huh. Looks like a balloon. Part of a balloon with stars on it. Huh. I wonder where that came from. Long ways, I'm sure. Okay. Down to 4%, so I better shut this thing off. Okay, I couldn't turn this up. This is a prime example of a canker on a tree. Sometimes they have orange fruiting bodies at the back. But what it does, this one's a hard maple. But what you can see, it eventually grows and grows and grows like cancer. And it'll grow to the back. And it'll eventually cut off the whole supply. And if it doesn't cut it off, the tree becomes so weakened it can snap off in a windstorm. So I thought I'd point that one out. So you can have a look at what that is. So it definitely kills the tree over time. And it was a young tree, or is a young tree still, so it's a shame. But it doesn't have any more potential at this point. And this is that same stream bed I've been following down. You can see it getting a little wider here. I have to come back again. This area. And have more power. I only brought one battery. Okay. And that? Hmm. Okay. Let's see what it looks like. Neat, eh? Wow. 
perfect. Nice spot. No bugs. Doesn't get any better than that.